Go ahead, Ed. Welcome to another question and answer show here at the Upholstery, Broadway Upholstery School. And boy, we are really excited. We've got a lot going on here at the shop. We had uh, Jimmy coming in today to do um, part of his class, which is the antique carved beautiful mahogany chair. I'm going to talk a little bit about this, have Jimmy come up in a minute. But we do have Jimmy in the audience, and he's on a very special chair that you uh, sofa that you guys saw last week. And uh, Patrick, can we scan over to Jimmy? Should I show him? Yeah, Should show him. Reveal him? Reveal Jimmy on the... Reveal on the... me, baby. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy is on, appropriately with the sunglasses for the... Sitting on the J, Jim, uh, John you Belushi you sofa. You gotta do this right. You gotta get in the mood, people. I'll tell you. Yeah. Well, actually, he, he just bought right before... The... <laughs> he just purchased. You believe this. Jimmy made a big offer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Big no. purchase of the day, yes it was. Yeah, but Jimmy, uh, we had fun taking that apart. I don't know if people realize we only found one penny in that last week. I'm it? thoroughly disappointed. I think we still should try again. Well, no, I think that was all that was in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you were, you were really exaggerating, thinking that you were going to find a lost movie script or uh, yeah, Blues Brothers 2 or I'm something. I'm the big items here. I don't blame you. Know, that was, if there was a script in here, imagine if there was. Well, you know, I felt like uh, you would you were like almost like Geraldo Rivera opening oh, up uh, Al Capone. No, no, not Geraldo. <laughs> Come on, I'm, I'm more of a I don't know who would I be. Walter Cronkite. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, I don't know how many people know Walter Cronkite. I know. Yeah. Getting all there, Jimmy. Nobody's knowing our references anymore. I know. So we're going to get right to this. We've got a lot going on here with questions and everything. And then I'm going to have you come up and talk about your project. Okay? Yes. Since we had some interesting challenges today on it. I want to talk about that. So well, I should mention what we filmed today. Finally, we, for the first time. We finally, much. Jimmy was back in studio for uh, a class that was suspended because of this COVID-19. And we're so happy to have him back and get back in the swing. And I know he was good. But we'll talk to him about that, too, when he comes up here. So let's get right to the so some of the YouTube comments. We have this on the 1860s Antique Chair Restoration. We've got tons of uh, comments on this. I think it has a lot to do with Patrick's graphics on the front, which I think were cute. You guys should check that out. 1860s Antique Chair Restoration. So uh, May says, this is so helpful in contemplating reupholstering a cameo couch. I thrifted. I'm mildly terrified, she said. <laughs> I always say there's no crying in upholstery, right, Jimmy? Uh, that's what you said to me the first day I showed up here. And even if there was crying in upholstery, we scotch got everything, right, Jimmy? Yes, that's right. <laughs> I don't think you've cried over over a sofa yet, or that you no, haven't been able. No, to. I haven't had that tender moment yet. But, uh. <laughs> and now Ed says on the how to upholster outside back for dining room chair. Usually, as usual, you guys, for any questions, just shoot them in because we got uh, Michaela here waiting for your questions and comments. Ed says uh, on this, uh, well done, how much in general do you think it would cost to do the entire chair? So I don't know if Ed knows it, but we did a pricing video, and that's up there now, right Patrick? Yep. On Broadway Upholstery School on the YouTube, right? Yep. And you can check that out. I got into um, a lot of the different pricing, and I think I did mention dining room chair seats, so you guys could check that out. Janine says... Um, on the upholstery show with Jimmy Back, John Belushi sofa last week and the coconut fiber mystery. Did we have a mystery solved last week on the coconut fiber? Uh, no, I think he was supposed to. Uh, well, we talked about the, the you know the mixture of the cost here and the coconut. Right, fiber. but we showed we showed a source where you can get to coconut fiber. Yes, people are having trouble. Yeah. You showed them. So Janine says it was great to be part of the question and answer. Thank you. And if Janine actually did she stay up late for that show, Patrick? Yeah, she did. She, she's in Australia, Jimmy. Oh, then that must be worth staying up for. Jimmy, I'm no scientist, but did you know that, uh, no, Patrick's not going to believe this, but our toilets, uh, the water, when you flush it, goes clockwise. Yeah. In, in Australia, it goes counterclockwise. Who told you that? You can Google it, you guys. I don't know. I don't know the scientific oh, reason for that. You're going to wear down my battery on a curious question. <laughs> but we have all these little tidbits here, Jimmy, all these tidbits of information, right? Uh, uh, but we'll, we'll have to have Janine confirm that. Right? Okay, we, we, well, I think that's a valid uh, question. I think it's very that. interesting. Uh, you know, inquiring minds want to know. And maybe we can travel there for a poster. Just for that reason? No, I don't think so. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> I'd rather see the kangaroos. We can start the GoFund for you, you know. <laughs> So now we got uh, from Miss Kim, how to upholster outside backward dining room chairs, the same, the same thing. 
the same video. Wonderful video, to the point and simple, thanks. I like that, I, I like that because that's just a compliment for the teaching, right? Thank you, Miss Kim. And now we got um, the eight-way tie instructional, one of our oldest videos online. We did that might be the first one. The one of the very first ones, which, which has got, how many, how many people have watched that? Uh, many people. Uh, I think we're up to 70,000 or 100,000 just on that one video, Patrick. That first video was... Well, that's a very video. staple. I mean, if you have the springs, Kevin, that is the, that is the ultimate lesson. To yeah, you. it's one of the big lessons that on yours. We'll get to yours, uh, what, what you did on this one here, yeah, Jim. Yeah, I, you yeah. know, the sad part about it is I don't do it enough. I wish I could well, do it see, this is what skill building is, you know, people, people, that, that's what you need to do. You need to keep doing and doing and doing to get good. But oftentimes people don't have the furniture, they don't, they don't have the opportunity or the time. Right. So that's, that's a problem. So Michelle says, so what warrants a hand-tied replacement? I have an old channel back chair and I'm unsure if that should be replaced. So you can usually see the bottom. Uh, because the bottom is sagging, it's not usually an indication that it needs to be redone, by the way, because that's what it's supposed to do. The jute's supposed to sag over time. So you should, believe it or not, like on your job that you did, Jimmy, with the right. jute webbing and the, and the jute spring tying and the burlap that you did and the eight-way tie that you did, you should, this seat, believe it or not, will be 75 years old before it needs anything. But what will happen in the 75 years is that it will start sagging on the bottom a little bit. That's a quality of the webbing. That's a good thing because the springs are popping through the top. So at some point, maybe at the 85 or 90 year mark, it might need to, the bottom might need to be replaced. Okay. But the top will keep going. I've seen the tops of springs 150 years. You believe that? 150 years. I mean, we're talking tortoises here, Jimmy. Tortoise lifespan. Come well, on. Well, this year alone is at least 80 years old. Yes. So with all this, the contents of it when we stripped it down, I mean, it, it showed a little bit of wear, a little bit of mm -hmm. time, but... So sometimes I, I'm, not, I'm not giving people extra pricing, extra money on doing that because it doesn't need to be done, which is good for the customer, good for me to sell the job. And we have a question? Uh, this is from Anne-Marie and John. Hi, Anne-Marie and Ireland. John. Yeah, they're from Ireland. From my favorite, yeah. favorite country. They waited, waited just a lot. Yeah. They've been waiting. How do you feel about doing piping on the material as opposed to doing it separately on a strip and then sewing it on after? I guess I don't understand that. Can you read that again to me? How do you feel about doing piping on the material as opposed to doing it separately on a strip and then sewing it on after? I need to see a picture. If they can send a picture of what they have, I'm not quite sure what they're saying. When you're doing, is it a cushion? Is it attached to the chair? Is is uh, is it on an outside? Is it around the base of a chair? So I have no reference on that. So we'll wait to get back. Maybe they could be a little bit more direct with that question. I'm not sure. Um, I'm just going to go on to the next one. Pat a cane dining room chair. Hannah says, this is amazing. I haven't been able to find a video that uses webbing in the way that my vintage chair has until now. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you, Hannah. Yeah, you know, when you've been doing it as long as I have, you have extensive knowledge on some, on some things we don't see a lot. Like downstairs, I have a womb chair. And womb chairs, those are modern chairs. You guys might want to Google it, W-O-M-B, womb. And, and they don't come my way that much, but um, I have done them, so um, you'll see things on the website that are real like that, but you can apply the knowledge on some of those things to other pieces of furniture, which I think that's the cool thing about it. Um, but thank you, uh, Hannah, for recognizing that. Uh, Luigi, um, the upholstery show, Jimmy is back. He says, congrats, great master, best wishes. Luigi from, I bet from Italy, right? Luigi from Italy? I'd love to go someday. I know, it's one I of my, really yeah, me too. Beautiful too. place. Uh, look at the next comment here, I wonder who the hell that is. Oh, we got a comment from one, from one James Olson, alias <laughs> from one James Olson. It's got padding and dining room chairs. He says, Mr. Kennedy, you are one of the best upholsterers ever lived. Oh, no, that's not what it says. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, who the, who the hell would say that? James. 
Alan Wise, known as the Boston guy, says, a great lesson, basic, but makes the difference in looks and durability. There you go, Jimmy. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you for commenting. Not a problem. That's three days. I, you know what, that was three days ago. Weren't you in the pub at that point? Uh, which pub? Which? pub? You were in the pub. You were on your 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 twelfth drink, weren't you? Uh, well, when you... thank God I was delirious when I got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing, no. Jimmy. Yeah, what well, pub? Nothing's open. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, my, my downstairs pub. <laughs> Now we go, oh, pricing and upholstery business. We have a comment on that video. Okay. Um, and this person is actually tuned in right now. The oh, show, the seven, new yeah. person, I think. I'm not sure if we Oh, will. I hope. To, thank you for tuning in. I'm convinced they just don't make furniture like they used to. There's a reason I can take a beating. There's a reason it can take a beating but still be solid. I'd rather pay for an upholstery job and still have a solid piece of furniture that will have longevity than constantly buying crap that I have to keep investing money into that that how true you know some furniture is just not redeemable what at all I won't mention the brand name but but we're looking into now Jimmy we as we move forward especially for younger people in the industry I think they're gonna to have to find creative ways of you know some of the low middle I'm not talking about the lowest line of furniture some of the low middle to middle um, can be structurally enhanced and then reupholstered I think people are going to have to start doing that if they want, if they want to, uh, especially if they're younger. Because I keep getting constantly reminded that I'm in the Northeast here. We get a lot of antiques, like that John Belushi sofa that you're sitting on. That's an Art Deco sofa from the 20s, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't see a lot of that in other parts of the country, other parts of the world. It's not, you know, they they're getting newer furniture to be reupholstered. So. Um, we, we always recommend teaming up with a woodworker. If you, if you don't, if you're an upholsterer, you don't know how to do woodwork, team up with a good woodworker that you trust and that you guys can work together. And, and the, together, the two of you can enhance some of this furniture that instead of having it being thrown away, right? I mean, right. you know? Uh, so the next uh, question, the upholstery show with pricing again and tips and starting your own business. Um, laugh at loud, just found uh, that LOL, right? Laugh out loud, right, Patrick? Yes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, I, I heard a story about a guy like me when, when computers first came out, right? He didn't know what LOL was. So he, he got a, an email from his son and said something like, your grandson fell down and cut himself and he got three stitches. Okay. And he responded, LOL, not knowing what it was. <laughs> Yeah. And he kept doing that, right? Yeah. And, and, and the son kept getting madder and madder because he, he, some of the serious stuff that he was trying to tell his dad, he was putting LOL. Well, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so he says, LOL, I know what that means. Just found the video from my settee. Um, this must be. Um, that was a live show. Right, yes, I kept everything down to the straw and horse hair, elbow pad shape as it is. I threw nothing out. We, we were responding to somebody, right, uh, using it. I, I was concerned that they threw some of the horse hair away, some of the forms, and especially the top of the arms. Using it and fabric as a guide for later. I had a ton of ladybugs inside because the back fabric was missing. Fabric that was on there was powdery bare. It had holes in the wood from nails. She sounds like she's got an old piece of furniture here that the nailed holes needed to be filled, sanded and restained. I'll keep you updated. Yes, I know it's a long and tedious project. We had, we were responding to somebody on the live show, right, Patrick? Yeah. Okay. So hopefully John gets back with the, okay, maybe this is him now. Uh, let's say welting on a cushion. How would you feel about sewing it onto the piece of material that you cut for the top of the cushion as opposed to making it separately and sewing it on after. Okay, I know. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't think I could do that. I mean, uh, I like to have control of my piping, um, to sew my piping separately. There's, there's one good reason for that is that, believe it or not, depending on how thin the fabric is or how heavy the fabric is, is how you cut the white welting, for one thing, right? So uh, to pay attention to, to, to also, Pay attention to the piping and then just sew it to the cushion at the same time. I think it's hard, and I think your corners would be would be a problem too. Getting around your corners, especially. So, so getting back to the, the width of the, the piping. So on thinner fabric, like thin stretchy fabric, 
you need to cut your piping wider because it's going to stretch and when it stretches it thins out you know what i mean so i like to get that part of my problem done right and with the separate piping and then i sew it usually i sew it onto the cushion top and the cushion bottom and then the boxing gets sewn onto that so i i wouldn't do now believe it or not manufacturers they have a special machine that does the whole cushion if you can believe it it's a special machine that does everything at once and that's why when you when you look at a store-bought piece of furniture that has a stripe in it the stripes are perfect it's because the machine makes it and most upholsters do not have a machine like that so i mean it's very expensive you can imagine i mean they, when you've got a hundred thousand sofas that you're doing that you can invest you know twenty five thousand dollars into a machine like that yeah i have to show you this the john and ann they're oh. set up on the TV. They got us. Uh... Oh, yeah, that's cool. Thank you. That's cool. Wow. Isn't that awesome. <laughs> yeah. Number one fans. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so now we got Bobby commenting on. Oh, now this is one of the old. We did a sofa from a lot of parts to this sofa, um, and he says something that's pretty funny. So we were doing the tufting back on this sofa, not just buttons. This is the actual pleated tufting. And he says, um, I was using several pieces of fabric and I couldn't figure out, well he says he was using several pieces of fabric and I couldn't figure out how he was going to join him, that he being me. However, towards the very end he shows you, it's magic, absolutely amazing, thanks for sharing, wow that's great. I like that enthusiasm, you know, I think that's part of being a good upholsterer is having that enthusiasm, right, right, uh, Jim? You gotta Jim? have some enthusiasm for yeah. it. If you don't, you know, it's, it, you got a little bit of love, a little bit of enthusiasm. If you don't, it's not gonna really help you. There you go. I think that's true on everything, right? Oh, I think so. I mean, I, I probably could find excitement watching paint dry, Jimmy. Well, uh, look at that paint dry over there, Jimmy. Yeah, the, the, if I, <laughs> my, well, I want to have like maybe a pizza party with that, Kevin. <laughs> We have another question from somebody. Well, speaking of paint, <laughs> um, person username is the show seventy eight. Uh huh. I would love a professional's opinion on the trend I see in many do-it-yourselfers of painting old fabric and not actually reupholstering anything. Ooh, yeah, I gotta tell you, I've I've tried to do that and. You talk about icky. Uh, you paint a fabric and it turns into a different fiber. That's bottom line. I mean, you, you, you've got a velvet, you paint it, it's going it, it, to, I mean, ha I think half of a beautiful fabric is the way it feels. I mean, or more, you know, it's, you want to sit on it, but usually the painting, cause it's like sandpaper. That's my experience. And I don't, I think the colors are very dull. You know, you can't get a vibrant color out of painting. Fabric. I mean, I think. What kind of paint do you use, Kevin? What kind of, what are you, you know, it's about? been a while. I tried to do it when it first came up. Maybe they perfected this a little bit, but uh, you know, it's not that great. Any shortcut of any type, you know, it's not going to be as good. You know, I've seen these people with. Uh, I've seen the commercial with the slip covers too. Yes. Uh, you know, people just put a slip cover on. It's just even a custom fit slip cover doesn't look good as an upholstery job. There's nothing like a good upholstery job. Sure. Really, nothing like it. And I don't. I don't like the idea of the painting unless they've come up with different things. I. I, I can't see how. I never heard of that before. Yeah. So that's all brand new to me. So then we have a, co a comment on how to upholster outside back of a dining chair. Where can I find the back fabric? Can't find it. Google. I think what what Miss Kim is talking about is the supplies that we use are very difficult to find. However, we've got some great news coming up. We are definitely, I know that this has been a long time, but it's not easy doing a website with all this stuff. Uh, but we, we're, we're close. We're close to offering. July 1st. July 1st to yeah, offering. You guys set for ourselves send people. in your orders. Yeah. If We're going to customize uh, your, the order to what you need. And, and you go through me. I'm going to tell you what you need and then how much you need and what the increments Increments in upholstery is just like it's crazy. We go by uh, yards, we go we go by uh, ounces, we go by pounds. Uh, there's so many different <laughs> variables on the supplies, and the and the and the increments of supplies. It's crazy, but I know it. And you know we we realize I mentioned this before. 
that our skill, the skill levels that we're showing, so much on, we have so much content with the skill that we kind of left out on, on the supply end of things. You know, we know that there's a demand and we're the experts in the supplies too. So we're going to be offering that and we're going to, listen, we're not going to be uh, going up really high, a little bit of a, a modest profit margin on this, not, not um, big, but, and so we're going to offer that. So watch out for that, you guys. We've getting a lot of these requests for supplies. That's what, another reason why we're doing it. Okay, so Martin says on a popped button for free, um, he says thank you. So every time somebody says thank you for a pop button, I save them about two or three hundred dollars or more. Oh, so, that technique with the. Well, we devised a technique, Jimmy, with using. I, I figured out a way that people can repair a pop button with using things that are just that they have at home instead of the specialized equipment that we use. Okay, we use a German needle usually to put that in with those clasps. Okay. And by the way, we're gonna be offering that in a kit. Oh, perfect. So. Um, I will be ordering, I can tell you that much, I did. Well, that's good, Jimmy. We're like glad to hear that. So how, another comment on how to oppose the 1860 chair, double piping, nice chair and fabric, but double piping is not an appropriate choice for historic chairs. It's an overused and modern application that didn't exist during the period of this chair. Absolutely correct. Uh, but what we find, though, um, with the modern chairs, first of all, uh, the gimp would be the appropriate trim. Gimp or braiding, people call it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't like that. So, so a lot of the consultation in the beginning will come, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. So the other thing is nails, um, decorative nails. Oftentimes on decorative nails, on a piece that's old, it's gonna cause a lot of structural problems for the wood, so we don't use that. Double welting seems to be a good compromise, because the, the thing about a double welting, you do it in the same fabric, Jimmy, mm -hmm. so the you're talking transitions from the fabric to the wood, okay. so that's only one transition of color, right? Okay. When, you, when you're doing gimp and tax, you use those two together, you're talking three transitions, and that's sometimes a problem, it's too much going on, in other words, right? Mm -hmm. So, so the double piping is done in the same fabric. Uh, yes, it's about an 80 or 90 year old uh, application. And the chairs from the 1860s. So, yeah, he's absolutely right. But oftentimes we, we um, consult with the customers to the best options, put it that way. Mm -hmm. Which gives us a good segue here with Patricia on, Patricia has a a side chair that she's, that she's done. And she says another project where I, are you, do you have this up, Patrick? Yeah. Another project where I had Kevin's words helping me every step of the way, a number of people certainly did extensive wood damage to this chair with tacks. So what were we just talking about? I needed some great fabric to inspire me to redo this one and have one more to go. Now look at that, she's got a gimp on there, I think. That's a gimp that I'm looking at, yeah. So there you go, there's an old treatment and, that, and I think that with black, Black is good. Black is probably the easiest color to match with a black fabric, the black gimp, I mean. So that's good. Jimmy, where are you going? Is it too uh, boring uh, for you? I'm going to the concession stand. Please, know. oh, okay. Yeah, get me a couple of popcorns, will you? Yeah, she's, uh, yeah, let me see if anybody's working here. I don't see anybody here now. And so we're almost done through this. So Randy, uh, he has a long uh, comment. Thank you for the video on pricing. It was very helpful and informative. I would like to see some additional videos on the business side of upholstery. Patrick, do you take a note? At least in my area, I have not found anyone who will candidly talk about pricing. So true. Fabric mock-ups, etc. I have been taking upholstery workshops. You know, I don't understand that. I, I, I'm a generous person. I like to share my knowledge. I've taught over, it's got to be 1,500 people upholstery in the Boston area, Jimmy. Wow. Um, so, but I, I don't think that that's a helpful thing. If you want to be in business, you want to be somebody that's known, maybe maybe uh, that you can work with. A lot of these people that you're helping uh, learn how to upholster sometimes can be customers. They could they become customers, yes. right? So you want to treat people with respect, right, Jimmy? And, and share your knowledge, why not? What's it gonna harm anybody, right? Exactly. I have been taking upholstery workshops at my local tech school for about 10 years and it is even hard to get my instructors to talk about how they run their shop and price items. The focus of the classes at the tech school has been mostly what you can call restoration. We strip a chair to the frame and then reconstruct it. I learned a lot from this but also struggling with how far 
do I take a piece down to get just reupholstered? Thank you again for the good pricing video. You're welcome. And I'll share my knowledge. I'll, uh, for any, anything that I have, anything left, we'll, we'll, we'll keep doing these videos, Jimmy. And uh, Randy actually had a follow up from the email. I was using the same Randy that emailed you. He says, thanks so much for teaching and sharing your experience. I have an issue I am looking for some different perspective on. I have a chair where the fabric has been stapled into a one quarter inch times one quarter inch groove and then a piece of single welt with the flag cut off and has been glued in the groove. I can get the welt out, but I'm left with glue covered fabric and staples in the groove. To make things even better, there is a finished show wood on the outside of the groove. Any ideas on removing the staples, or do I even have to? I plan on filling the groove with a 532nd weld cord uncovered and using ply grip to put the finished edge of the fabric in place. The customer wants no weld in the chair. Any advice would be helpful. Well, I think that your problem here with this chair starts with your consulting with the customer. Sometimes customers want to do their own thing. I, I had somebody that insisted I reuse these old Spanish French uh, Spanish nail on a sofa and I knew I said no I don't want to do that because I know that they're gonna pop open oh no I, I insist you do it well I did it and I was out the house three or four times because the nails the heads were popping off and I I knew that I shouldn't have done it this is, seems like a case your customer needs to know that um, you really can't use ply grip on the inside of a chair not a good idea Ply grip is best used on the outside of a chair with piping, with the finished piping. So ply grip even by itself on an outside back is kind of rough because people can hit up against it and it can open. On the inside of a chair, not a good idea. So I hope you can go back to your customer or the friend that you're doing this for and say, listen, you can't do this. You can't use ply grip on the inside of a chair because what's going to happen, it's going to open up and ply grip can be very sharp. Um, I guess. Uh, you, you've got a problem. You, you, you have somebody that wants something that, that might not be able, you might not be able to deliver it. You should be, the best thing to do is either reuse, you can knock those staples in and reuse a, a finished piping for the groove or double piping. Double piping might even be a better solution to this, okay? But this is a consulting, you're consulting your client in the beginning problem, I think. They're asking you to do something with no wealth that might not be advisable on this chair. So I hope that answers that. So we one got one more email I put on top of the chair there to one more email? Wow. Are these coming in now, Pat? No, those are the ones you sent me. Okay. Hi Kevin. Um, I really enjoyed watching your YouTube video on repairing the old movie set. All three episodes. I have seven seats from a theater when they decided to upgrade and sold the old one off. They're not as old. Now he's talking about a theater chair that we did, you guys. That's an interesting uh, I think that was an art deco theater that we did chair, one chair that we did, we restored it. Uh, they're not as old as the one you on your video, but I figure this time I'll get them out, to the, out of the garage and maybe a home theater. He's thinking about a home theater. And those chairs that he's doing are up right now. Oh, good. Fortunately, some gentle soap, water, and wet back brought the cushions and seat backs to life. Really lucky. I'm wondering if you have any ideas for the metal pieces. Uh, I don't. Um, I don't have any ideas on the metal pieces. That doesn't come up often. I'd be very careful about metal. Uh, it's really hard finding somebody. Sometimes people take it to an auto body shop. I think that's your best bet, but you got to have somebody that you trust that you know will do a good job. Usually auto body mechanics don't want to touch anything other than a car. That's my experience. We used to have to try to get a barber chair metal uh, done and re-chrome. What a nightmare that is. I don't even think um, that's an environmentally safe process anymore, to be honest with you. I think that falls under lack of furniture, which is not a environmentally safe. So you're going to be challenged there. I'd like to do a better job than spray painting. That might be the only thing you can do yourself. Powder coating is expensive and good, but nobody, but maybe a good paint shop might be the solution. Yeah, you're going to have to find somebody that does this. Automobile, auto body guys. Thoughts on anyone recommended? Um, I don't know where to send you. He says, also have a couple of mid-century swan chairs from the early 60s and the leather is dry, loose. And the one is ripped on its right side. I wonder if you think you can be repaired and refreshed or we require entirely new leather coverings. Anytime leather gets, gets um, ripped or the seams open up, you're out of luck. You can't repair it, period. I mean, if, if you're just looking at a, a restorer, there are some very few leather restorers out there that might be able to help you if it wasn't damaged. But on this one here, these, these leather chair, swan chairs, 
<clears throat> I wouldn't take a, I wouldn't say if you brought me the leather, I wouldn't do these chairs. If you brought me fabric that I recommend, yes, but not leather. They're almost impossible for a, a custom upholsterer to do. If you're a custom upholsterer out there, you've done swan chairs. You got those swan chairs up, Patrick? Yeah, I was showing them. You, we had a swan chair in here. You guys, did we have that video, Patrick, of the swan, the swan chair? That, that's the one you were doing on the live stream, I'm pretty sure, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, we had a live stream with the swan chair in here, and I, I think I had to finish it before we could follow up, but it came out great because it was a fabric that we put on it. But these le this leather process that they have at the factories, they have a heating process that they use. Some of it's secret. They don't tell anybody. And, and it's really difficult, uh, the process that they use is tried and tried and tried till they get it perfect. But that's part of the challenge of mid-century furniture, all you upholsters out there, is that you actually have to uh, be uh, this trial and error thing that you have to go through. You know, you can make patterns and things like that, but what you have to remember on a swan chair, when you look at a swan chair, that thing has been engineered. And they, they probably have uh, hundreds of, of uh, patterns that they use before they got it just right. That's the challenge of, it, of an upholsterer, probably for everything that we do, really. Um, so we have to be very clever in how we, how we do things. Problem solving, right guys? So Pam, uh, do you have that up there, Pat? This is very interesting. Pam has been very proficient, and um, <clears throat> she's got up here um, an ottoman that she did out of a vintage rug. And she's, I'll read what she says. Finished up another vintage rug ottoman coffee table. The rug was badly torn in many places along one edge, really couldn't be repaired and used as a rug any longer. We built a custom frame to use every good inch. I'm happy with how it turned out. I think it, that is terrific. I'll tell you, a piece like that on a, uh, in a store, like an uh, like antique store, would go out just like that. Just like that, it would it'd be sold. Uh, I don't know if Pam is doing this to sell, but that looks like a beautiful piece. And talk about versatile. You're never going to wear through that thing, huh? And she's got a little tray up there that's cute. And she's got a crown on this, which is fine. Uh, but uh, let me tell you, this is not easy to do. I, I, I admire Pam for the job that she's done on this. I wonder if she should, if she's listening, I'd like to know how she did her corners. Tell us how you did your corners. Did you cut the corners, pre-cut the corners, or did you stitch the corners down before you put it on? I'd like to know. Because you got a real clean corner there that I can see. Really nice, nice job. Okay, so now we're all set for Jimmy. Sorry, Jimmy, we were kind of long-winded. Did you uh, did, wake you, up? You long-winded? <laughs> I would have never thought that of you, Kevin. Come on up, Jimmy. We're going to talk about my chair today. Jimmy, you had how many classes? Nine classes so far. This this thing is a complete restoration. Oh, my God. I, I couldn't, I knew that you, when I saw the, the seat, I said, oh, my God, it's pretty bad. But mm. seeing underneath when we finally got to the roots of it, mm -hmm. oh my God, it was worse than I thought. So let's just show people. I mean, Jimmy went right down to the frame, and I'm just going to tilt this up just for so them to see the bottom. He's got the, the webbing, the, the uh, appropriate seat webbing, and we've got the clinch that we were attached the springs to in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And let's bring it up again, Jimmy. And Jimmy's eight way tied the top, which you guys can't see right now. I uh, put the burlap on, then we put rubberized horse hair on the, on the deck and on the front of the seat. So today what Jimmy was doing was we actually stitched the, um, the seat the deck down hand. We machine stitched it first. Yes. And then he hand stitched it down to create. People say, why do you do that? Why don't you just go over the whole thing? Because we need the seat bigger than the deck, right? Right. And that's why the seat that's is That's a there. good rule of Jimmy, we've got a question. Maybe you could take this question, Jimmy. Okay. Let's see if you can answer this question. Well, this is an update from Pam. Oh. Uh, she, she says, yes, it's for sale. Uh, I've sold two of them already. Wow. And the corners are... She's doing... we, we got to get her in here. are cut and hand-stitched. Broke three needles and found using needle-nose pliers to get the needle through helped. Wow. Very interesting, yeah. Um, I think I'd like to see that technique. I wonder if I can give us some tips on that. Um, sh she can't machine stitch it unless she had a huge machine. So she's doing the only thing you can do. She yeah. can't stitch those corners down. Wow. The scary part about that is you have to cut them. Mm -hmm. You have to cut, you can't, you just can't fold it. You have to cut some of that out in the back. Mm -hmm. and, and so when you cut a carpet, as you know, it kind of frays. Yes. So she can't overcut it. So thank you, Pam, for getting back to us. But Pam, Pam is uh, proficient, and oh, she she's does, still uh, good. I'd yeah. love to watch her myself. Yeah. 
So, so getting back to this, Jim. Yes. Right? So what you did was uh, we we took a light Dacron on, mm -hmm. on the over the horse hair, and yes. then we we upholstered the deck. Yes. Right after we stitched down this seam, and now we were working on the the seat portion of it, and the idea on the seat portion is to get it higher than the deck. Always. So that you want to create on your cushion a pitch, a pitch bag. Mm -hmm. Probably about 10 to 15 degrees. That much? 10 or 12. Okay. 10 or 12. The 15 degrees is the back here. So normally the, the body wants wants that about 10 or 12 pitch back here and about a 15 degree pitch back here. Mm -hmm. So I mean we don't, um, one time I went into a waiting room where the chairs were wedged and you know we see a lot of this today. Look you guys. Straight. Who, who, what, what person wants to sit on a wedge like that? We want to sit like this. We want to recline. Most bodies want to recline, right? At mm -hmm. about 17 inches off the ground, right? That's yeah. the sign of a good piece of furniture. Yeah. And that's why somebody was co commenting earlier about the old furniture. It's well designed this way. It's really well designed. But the new furniture, it's, a, it's like this. And what they try to do, if they might understand, so they start with the wedge, they might understand oh, we need to make it more comfortable, we can't wedge it. So what they do with the filling, they try to, they try to w do the wedging with the filling, mm -hmm. which, which doesn't, is not as successful as having a piece of furniture already with the angles. Right. Which, by the way, is yes. not easy to do. No. You know, dining room chairs are the hardest things for a woodworker to, to, to make because of Too that Too many reason. joints. Too many joints, right. Mm -hmm. and, and a good quality piece of furniture is hard to make. So that's why the, the newer manufacturers always want to, you know, they start with the box pretty much and then they use padding. Now we use padding um, also on antique furniture. Now Jimmy had, you ready for this, Jimmy? Talk to me. Jimmy took out probably 10 bags of... Coconut fiber. <laughs> Out of this chair. What's today's word, everyone? Oh, oh the bird's going to come down from the ceiling. Yeah, the little, little, little strand. <laughs> But um, we couldn't reuse that, and we didn't want to spend thousands of dollars on horsehair, which would be a good replacement for the coconut fiber. I really wished, I really thought when we, when you started taking it apart, that we did have the horse. I know. It, we I, would have been reusing the horsehair. Oh, absolutely. It would have been a different technique. So what yeah. our challenge is using modern materials to try to come up with the same look and feel. Yes. So on the front, uh, we used a one-inch piece of foam, and then we used another day to kind of help the foam form, mm -hmm. right? And then Jimmy uh, is upholstering this. Now this is where he's at now, he's pin tacking this. Right. Um, so so the, the classes, the online classes, you guys, so if you're new to us, we have the Broadway Upholstery School YouTube, right? Yes. Which has been extremely successful. It's been going on for 10 years, and we're really happy with that. Mm -hmm. Getting a lot of information out there. Never would be able to do that in, in teaching 10, 12 people at a time three days a week, which is what I used to do. Yes. That's 36 people uh, every eight weeks. Now we're reaching hundreds of thousands of people, right, Jimmy? Yeah. But uh, the online classes, so, you, so you're gonna get a good background on the on those YouTube channel, on the Broadway yes. Upholstery. But it's the online classes where you learn things that we're talking about now. Yes. So we talk about this. You yes. ask the, you ask the right questions. I don't know everything, so no, we but, back to you. No, know, but at least you say, okay, I have a question, and mm -hmm. you kind of like surmise it for, for everybody. And I th again, with this chair, which is hopefully what people will watch it as, as we go along, it's mm -hmm. gonna, you'll see the leaps and bounds with this. So you've done, you've done a few of the classes. Um, I think you're up to what, 30, 30 you know, one hour classes so yeah. far in, in a few semesters? Yeah. And you know, we had a question today about piping in a groove, and you had that problem on one of your pieces, I think. The, um, the ottoman, ottoman, right? Which we did not know was factory, <clears throat> right? So I had a, a set. Do you remember the section we delivered? We delivered yes. a section, you guys. Wow, what a lot of work! It had 14 cushions, big cushions on it. Yes. And the seating area for seven, seven or eight people, and yes. it was a, it was a, it was a, a two chaise lounges. A corner piece, a love seat, and a small little uh, chair. I have forgotten yeah. about the love seat. Huge, huge and, uh, job. And, and we we still snuck but it in. But guess what they did? On the it was a, it was a good American-made furniture. I liked it. Okay. Except that uh, sometimes they not always thinking about us, right? As no, they never do. So that. what they did with the bottom with the legs, mm -hmm. they 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 epoxied the legs on, and they took these huge screws, 
They had dowels and screws, right? And that thing was like part of the piece of furniture. So you'll the never get it. The only way I could have gotten that out was to chisel it off. And then you get into other problems. You know, you yeah, need- Yeah, because you damage, you might be damaging hmm. the frame too as well. So it's just like your, your ottoman. I had, to, I had to find a solution to not take the legs off. The problem is they're right up against the, they're, they're well, they no skirt. Well, they so much. There's no room, but you find a way. And, and well, that's, that's, that's a good point with the online classes because we come up with at least one, two, or three of these problems almost in every episode, mm. every, every one, I mean, I, not a semester, episode. So I think the value in those classes is huge. I think you're gonna find a lot. Well, I think with this project, you, you may see some new things too. I mean, yeah. because this is going to be, this was, I can't remember what this was, it was so, it was, well, you, oh, had, it was you had more coconut fiber. I mean, oh, there was some, but it was also, they had the springs. Yeah. Had, we had small springs in the back, which mm -hmm. is something I had never seen before. You had small springs. We don't, I, I don't like the idea. Now, remember the John Belushi sofa? We took that apart, and in the back was broken springs, back springs. Yes. Right? Yes, and they were what gauge? I don't they were light gauge. Light gauge. Light, very light gauge spring on the back. So it and it didn't seem like they really actually did anything. No. No, it, it didn't. I, you don't need to do that. Now, of course, in all fairness to the 1920 Art Deco upholsterer, he didn't have some of the options we have today with the foam. Right. So, so the only way they could get soft, comfortable backs and, and arms is to use springs, mm. so light gauge springs, which isn't the best thing to use. No. We are lucky today that we, you know, when you're both a traditional upholsterer and a modern upholsterer like I am, that we can we can go back and forth on the supplies and the materials. Yeah, you'll know what works. Yeah. But this will have to be built up at least what two inches. We need two inches on this. Yes. And, and then you asked about the arms today. Yes. On the arms, because they're very narrow chair, we can't overstuff the arms. The right. arms get so hardly any pattern. Hat about a half hardly inch. Hardly any pattern. Yeah. Because you, you need to, especially with some of the wide bodies we have today. Not you, Jimmy, but. Some other people, maybe. Oh, thank you for the I'm glad you noticed I lost some of the weight here. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to get in that chair. <laughs> well, right. If we overstuffed the arms, right? But the other, the other thing we're talking about, finishing this up and going to the very end, is again with the trimming, yeah. but also the, the nails. You they, were asking about nails. nails. And I, you know what I'm going to have you do? La, I hope this isn't going to give you too much pressure. I'm just going to check the time out here. Okay. Right, we're almost on our. Uh, I'm coming up, no, we're doing pretty good on time. I'm gonna ask Jimmy, because he asked about this, he was jumping ahead, he, he, he likes the nails. So he has a mahogany, it's very difficult to get a nail to a decorative nail. So I'm gonna see, Jimmy, if okay. how you do with the technique. Yep. If I can not draw. Stop throwing your stuff around, Kevin. Told you about that stuff. No, no, I told you not to go barefoot in the shop, Jimmy. You're gonna get those tags. Well, it is naturist week, you know. <laughs> And his sunglasses are still on. So I don't know if you can see Oh yeah, you might want to take the sunglasses off. <laughs> We're all about safety here. <laughs> yeah, my you know, my safety night goggles. Oh, yeah, I'm you, sorry. You're, it's like Houdini. you're like Houdini. We might as well let's give you a straight jacket and see if you can do them just kidding. <laughs> yeah. So and you, and you guys will come back for me in a little while, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh sure, right after dinner. You know, let's, yeah. let's hang them from the upholstery shop chandelier up there with the straight jacket. Ooh, is, that that, gonna, is that that piece of string or is that dust bunnies? <laughs> what? We're gonna give him the magnetic hammer with the decorative tag to see if Jimmy can get this in. And if I can? If you can, we're gonna have to give you a prize. I've uh, seen some of your prizes. Well, this one here is a, a paid trip to Hawaii to a coconut fiber farm, processing fiber plant. Processing plant yeah, where you can yeah, enjoy I, as I much. I knew that was coming. <laughs> you guys, you know. I mean, you could have got me to, I could have gone into the cone of coffee I've lived there in Hawaii. It's some real stuff. But no, you guys. So, one of your problems, Jim, okay. is that uh, problems with putting decorative nails, is there's a lot of force on these. Yes. Right? And most of the problems come from the arms and from the areas where there's no great support. Right. So when you're hammering, you have to put a, a hand behind here a lot of times while you're hammering, first okay. of all. I, so what I want you to try to do is, because the tack will go right in there. Let's see if you can get a tack in. Let's just see how. Now you don't use your magnetic. Have you ever done a tack like this? Have you I that? did a project, yes, for my sister. And that, okay. that, well, that went really well, but that was a different type of wood. Probably a, a softer wood. So you don't want to use your magnetic end of your hammer for this. 
and people uh, now we do have Patrick we do have a video on how to put a nail panel on one of the I've older videos the, I've seen the, the, the panel so what you find when you put an attack in especially on hardwood it's not just it's not like putting a nail in straight 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 it's like your your you have the head you have the dome head that wants to go crooked so you so have to constant adjusting right you yes. have to look to see where it's so so if you if you have a clock that's 12 o'clock that's three uh three o'clock right um you could you could be almost all over you know when you're hammering your tablet it is clock, yes it's right? not a straight shot so it's the first like thing i'm going to have you do too is okay. to get eye level a little bit above eye level so you need a chair you need to pull up a chair all right, i can do this I think. okay let's see if jimmy can get a tack in now now here's your here's your goal wait a minute let's just show people what he has to do so I'm, I'm having him at the, the worst part of the chair, which is right at the edge here. How the many, most sensitive part. How many do you want? Just, I want you to try to get one right in here. Do and don't, you, don't, you can't go on the finished no, wood. No, that's that. No, right? I know. I, I, you need to be, let's pretend like the fabric's up there. So yeah, let's see so how well, you get, get that Get that prize money ready. What, how do much we, is it again? <laughs> do we have a drum roll, Patrick? Hey, Penny. <laughs> oh, he gets the penny from the John Belushi song yeah, the last yeah. week. Yeah, that, that's, that's my coin collection, guys. <laughs> hey, you know what? Put that in your coin collecting. Yeah, okay. I See? knew I was going to get something like that from you. Uh-oh. <laughs> Make me nervous, guys. Oh. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think it's been a while since I did this, so yes. Yeah, it's not easy. No, when it's, when it's especially with the hot wood. And then after you do that, I'm going to try one over here. No? I'm not holding it right, probably. So probably some, some people have needle nose pliers that they use to hold it. Um, I don't. Um, see how his hammer is, is already, he's anticipating that the dome is... Did you get that all the way in? Yes. Oh boy. I I'm need one more. Let's see if I can do one? another one. Let me just see. Kind of like in there, but it's still very good. Good. You weren't uh, in that seam, were you? No, no, kind of like right on it. But do you have another uh, check, oh. please? We'll see what else I can do. What other miracle I can perform? things pop up like the dexterity that you need is 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 interesting on this um, big fingers like Jimmy has not necessarily good on this no uh, it's very delicate work um, it's the idea is you get one in at a time and you need to get them as straight as possible they have a gun that they sell that shoots these decorative tacks, which I wouldn't recommend to anybody. Um, they actually do too good of a job. What do you mean? Well, I guess what I mean by that is that this isn't a perfect science when you do it by hand. And the little nuances from tack to tack that you need. The, 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 the gun is too straight, right? It's it just one shot and shoots it in. So actually with the gun, the nail gun, it actually is more crooked than doing it by hand. Does that make sense? Uh, so Jimmy is holding the back so that he doesn't put all the pressure on the joints, right? How did that come? Uh, it came out okay, not the best, but it's... Uh Again, you know, of course, you're doing it without fabric too, so you know. Well, yes. But that's good. I, I think that if you're comfortable, we were talking a little bit, you guys, about is he going to do it or not. If you're comfortable with it, then do it. It's a lot of you know why. It's all here. Yeah. Uh, inside and out, but also well, there's the, probably a thousand tacks. In I think a few hundred. So these two tacks took you know maybe a couple of minutes each. Well, you know what? Again, there's something I don't know if you mentioned. There is something these sell where you put the tacks on like a rack. That's no good. No, you don't like yeah, that? No, now, Jimmy's talking about a strip and never used it. It doesn't look good. What it is, here's, here's the thing. It comes in strips and every 10th tack is empty, so you put a tack in, a real tack in. Okay. The problem is, these are colored, these come colored uh, 
dies. Okay. Each box is different. So believe it or not, you could have be you could be three shades off of the and it looks terrible. Uh, really. And I could see you could see the welding in between each. So you need box. basically like a pair of needle nose pliers to hold the. Well, I I the, said some people do that. I don't do that. Well, I think you have to find your own technique to see right. how it works for yourself. Right. And, and then you have to get speed. Yes, yeah. and that's going to take probably a good 15 20 minutes to do that yeah. all alone. Yeah. So so you're in for a lot of work to do that, but if you're willing to put the work in it, it's a well, great Well, I wanted treatment. to restore it as best I can. I want to see what it looks like when we have all everything said and done. Sure. We put a little trimming on it to see what it looks like, yeah. and I'll talk to my client and see what he wants to do. Good. Well, you got a lot more work in it. You're going to learn a lot, and and like I said, everybody that's beginning, you, you, the more work you do, the more you do, the faster and more proficient you become. So, Jimmy, I think you're well on your way. Mm -hmm. okay. And if there's any other, are there any other questions? Do you have any other questions, Jimmy? No, no. I think when we do the class next week, will be there'll be other questions I'll be having at the time when things start to change up sure. a little bit, switch with the sure. the stuffing on the sides and here on the back. I want to see how we all do this with. Yeah. An inch and a half to two inches worth. Just going to be more foam. Yeah. So uh, until next time. Okay. Then, uh, one more thing I want you to mention is tomorrow, Bernice's class is going up. Ooh, yeah, you guys. Uh, uh, Bernice's slip cover class. And you guys need to catch that on uh, the online classes, right, Patrick? Yeah. That is uh, because Bernice, if you guys, anybody out there is going into the slip cover business, you need to see these videos because she's got her own techniques about how to speed yourself up a little bit and how to make your, your life a little easier. And you'd be surprised. She was a mathematician in another life. so, And she's got a really good teaching style I think you're going to like. Um, she's she's really good. So check check her out. Broadway Upholstery School, right, Patrick? Yep. Four classes. Four, um, four classes. An hour plus each. Yeah. Good. So uh, everyone who has the yearly subscription is already going to be getting it. And some people might recognize Bernice. She's been out there. Uh, she's been around doing these uh, videos on in other venues. That um, she's actually been asked to appear at some of these slipcover network places. Well, so, we have to get her. We have to make sure she doesn't wander too far. Can't I know. We got to grab her. She's really been a good friend of upholstery on Broadway and Broadway Upholstery School. So Jimmy, she, she did Jimmy's last class with arts and crafts chair. She made an appearance. Oh, she did. She made an. I forgot about that. Do you remember did she? That, Jimmy? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. She did. Yeah. I hadn't. Jimmy wasn't it. here because of the. Uh, well, I remember meeting. Was it because before. of the pandemic? I don't know when we filmed that. We're not sure, but. You guys will, will like that, and there's a lot of really exciting stuff coming up, including the show where we go out and try to find furniture. The, what, what's that show going to be called, Patrick? I don't know. Maybe, they, maybe you can help us come up with a name. Yes. <laughs> yes. So if anyone wants to come up with a name for our new show where we are searching for furniture, which uh, an awful lot of people do at this time of the year, they're changing the dining room sets, the living room sets, and they're throwing their love seats and their uh, regular chairs, wingback chairs out. If you want to come up with a name for us for our new series, let us know. Thank we'll put you. a poll out there. We already filmed one episode of that, so that's right. Found an interesting. Yeah, did we? Did we? No, we did not, no one's seen that yet. So no. it's going to be another fun. Uh, well, by then we'll have a new title, and then we'll we'll be good. We'll be good. So until next time, unless there's another question, I think we're not. So we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Hey, no problem.